everybody and welcome back. This is our third video blog and this is our take on the financial markets. My name is Michelle Kessel Harbert and I'm here with my colleague Ken Brown and today we're going to talk about the important role of dividends. Ah, dividends. Before we do, I, I just want to um, talk a little bit about, you know, how, I, not to be morbid, but how some deaths hit us harder than others. And last night, um, one of my favorite all-time uh, singer-songwriters, um, John Prine, just passed away uh, from complications from coronavirus. And um, John Prine it was it was just a treasure, um, a funny guy, you know, melancholic at times, but a wonderful songwriter. So um, rest in peace, John. Um, but to get on to dividends, um, yeah, dividends don't get a lot of respect. <laughs> They're like the Rodney Dangerfield in the investment arena, um, or the Dowager Aunt, or the Hermit Uncle that, that, that ends up leaving you $2 million, and you never knew it was coming, you never knew they had any money. Um, but, but essentially, dividends are sort of a backbone of return. And we'll get into a little more of that later. And actually, Michelle uh, unearthed an interesting quote from Jack Bogle that we'll finish up with. Uh, but um, the uh, dividends essentially, uh, dating back to the 1930s, in four of these decades, dating back to the 1930s, uh, dividends have played the dominant role in returns. In two of those decades, there were negative returns, one of them being the 2000s. And um, in two of those decades, uh, dividends provided all of the return to the extent there was a modicum of return in those decades. So they are very important. And again, they can be sort of an underpinning of return as well as consistent cash flow um, for people that are perhaps in retirement. So when you're investing, are you looking for companies that only have dividends? Uh, no, uh, not necessarily. There's some, you know, wonderful companies um, in, you know, technology, for example, or in healthcare that uh, that don't have dividends and have provided consistent long-term returns. Um, but dividends, again, um, all things being equal, are desirable, and um, we we love companies that provide um, consistent dividend income, that have a history of raising their dividends over a period of time. And um, frankly, um, again, if, uh, if we had our choice, um, uh, all of our companies you know, would pay out something on a current basis. But again, that's, that's, not, that's not possible. So is high yield always better? Uh, no, it's not. And in fact, um, there are a number of companies that you know pay out uh, high dividends and have high yields, um, but are not uh, necessarily those dividend yields are not necessarily safe. And in some cases, companies actually borrow to pay a current dividend. Um, there are you know certain instances where um, you can find a reasonably high paying. Uh, uh, get a reasonably high yield from a company and also have a modicum of growth. A couple things we look for. One is dividend coverage. It's basically a ratio. So if you're looking at net income on it with a company, which would include all expenses and taxes, so after-tax income, um, and basically then you're looking at the dividend level and you're, you're sort of dividing the two. So if you have, for example, per share, say $15 in net income and you have a dividend of $5, you essentially have three times dividend coverage, which would be considered more than enough, very adequate. So again, this would allow over time as a company grows their revenues and grows their earnings to increase their dividend and perhaps keep that three-time coverage intact. So what else are you looking for? Um, well, obviously that, that ties into companies that have strong balance sheets. Um, we're basically looking at perhaps the cyclicality of the industry. Uh, again, uh, a company that's heavily impacted by negative economic news 
um, might go through a period of time where they have to pare back their dividend or in some cases cut their dividend out entirely. Um, one of the largest, if not the largest oil company in the world, uh, recently uh, cut their capital expenditure budget by $10 billion in order to preserve their dividend. And we'll see if that works. I mean, their cash flows are gonna be seriously impacted by the drop in oil prices. So that would be a case where you do have heavy cyclicality and you know a, a real effect from the from the slowing economy. So Ken, let me ask you this: What do you what do you see happening to dividends? What's your expectation for dividends moving through the rest of this year and into twenty twenty one? Certainly, no growth. There there could be some drops in in dividends, um, and in fact, we'll we'll expect to see that. Um, the current yield. Um, dividend yield in the S&P 500 is about 2.3%. That's up because of the drop in the market. That's up from 1.8% in, in January. Um, now, again, this change in perception with other stakeholders, mainly the job market, um, preserving jobs, and also the communities that these companies serve um, there'll be less emphasis on returning cash or returns to you know investors. Um, so we're not expecting dividend growth, and in fact, uh, we will see probably cuts. And then again, um, stock buybacks will be you know seriously um, cut back. So those two methods of returning cash to investors will be curtailed to a certain extent. So those investors that rely on those dividends, say for income on a monthly on a monthly basis. That, that could potentially affect them quite quite substantially. Right, and some of the things we've we've done over time is you know, avoid stretching for yield. So we're not looking for necessarily the highest yielding uh, dividend you know companies. Those are oftentimes subject to cuts, and and severe reductions in some cases elimination. So we're, again, going back to what we said earlier, looking for companies that are real consistent, that provide uh, good coverage and, you know, essentially are not um, in a position where they have to make these rather draconian moves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that's really interesting. So it'll be interesting as we move forward through the rest of this year and into next year to see what really happens. Um, so I wanted to get back to something you mentioned earlier, which was uh, Jack Bogle. And of course, he's the founder of Vanguard, and he had an interesting quote where he uh, talked about the, the growth in the S&P 500. If you had invested $10,000 in uh, 1926, which was the inception with all dividends reinvested, through the end of September 2007, you would have seen a compounded growth of 10.4%, so meaning that that $10,000 that you put in in 1926, not adjusted for inflation, in 2007 would be worth $33.1 million. Ooh, wow. So that shows you right there. That's amazing. The, yeah, the, the importance and the power of compounding returns. Um, and that would be versus a uh, 6% compound return and uh, your $10,000 would be 1.2 million without the, the dividends. So huge different, huge difference that. Oh, wait a minute, pays. wait a minute. You're suggesting Jack Bogle said that the difference between dividend-paying stocks dating back to 1927 or 1926 right. and non-dividend-paying stocks with the reinvestment of dividends is 32 million. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow, that's yes. amazing. It is amazing. Yeah, that's I, amazing. I was I was shocked again. Uh, inflation was was not included in that, but so still, that's like that's like still. over ninety percent of the return. Then dating back to that time, has come from reinvestment of dividends, right? Compounding, right, right. Well, there's the power of compounding. The, the power of compounding, exactly. Right, right. So, well, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, with that, we want to thank you once again for watching. If um, if there is a, a specific question that you have for us, and um, if you have it, probably somebody else has it. So reach out to us. Uh, shoot us an email. Uh, give us a call and uh, give us your question and we'll we'll talk about it in our one of our next videos and meanwhile stay well stay out of harm's way exactly social distancing yep take care thank you thank you so much bye-bye